Hello, welcome to American Regions, a new YouTube channel where we explore the history of different regions in America. Today's region is Long Island. Long Island is in the southeastern part of New York State. Long Island is an island split up into four counties, Kings, also known as Brooklyn, Queens, Nassau, and Suffolk. Since Brooklyn and Queens are part of New York City, this video is going to focus on the last two, Nassau and Suffolk, which are two counties that people normally think about most when they think of Long Island. These counties can further be subdivided into 13 towns that themselves contain many smaller hamlets, the most populated town being Hempstead in Nassau County with an estimated population of over 700,000. Long Island was originally inhabited by different Native American groups that can be separated into western tribes that spoke the Muncie language of the Algonquin language family, similar to tribes in New Jersey and the Hudson Valley and eastern tribes that spoke the Mohegan, Montauk, and Narragansett language of the Algonquin language group, similar to tribes in southern New England. Long Island was central to the production of wampum, which are beads made from shells found along the Long Island Sound. These wampum beads can be made into belts, which were used for ceremonial purposes and for signifying treaties between tribes. It was also kind of used like money, but not really because the modern conception of money didn't exist in the area until Europeans arrived. What's important is that wampum was a highly sought after resource in the present day Northeast United States, and Long Island was one of the main areas where it was produced. Sometimes this led to wars between native groups over the resource. For example, the Montaukets and Shinnecock tribes on Long Island often dealt with raids by native groups from New England, like the Pequots and Narragansett. In the 17th century, Dutch explorers visited Long Island and the areas surrounding it. From those ventures, they created a land claim from the Delmarva Peninsula in the south to the Hudson River Valley in the north. However, the Dutch were only able to found settlements in a smaller subset of this claim, and that area would later become New Netherlands. Around that same time, the Connecticut and New Haven colonies had claims to the eastern part of Long Island and started to settle there in 1640 with the founding of the town of Southold. New Netherlands and the English colonies would eventually settle on a clear boundary in Long Island west of the town of Oyster Bay with the 1650 Treaty of Hartford. These early colonies often traded with the tribes on the island to get things they didn't have or couldn't produce themselves. The early colonists in the area would adopt wampum as a currency until the 1670s and actually use their technology to produce wampum faster than the natives could, leading to inflation. It also seems likely that the colonists' willingness to trade European goods for wampum started or intensified fights between Native American tribes over that resource. A few of the tribes on the island were skilled at hunting whales, and they became highly sought after in the early colonial whaling industry. Also, since eastern Long Island was popular with Puritans from New England, the natives in that area faced a lot of pressure to convert to Christianity. In 1664, English frigates sailed into New Amsterdam's harbor and annexed New Amsterdam without a fight from the citizens of New Netherlands. At the beginning of English rule, New York was a proprietary colony under the rule of the king's brother, the Duke of York. This basically meant that New York was a gift that the king gave to his brother. This gift included all of Long Island, even the eastern half, which was under Connecticut's jurisdiction and whose settlers wanted to stay part of Connecticut. But the king's brother's claim won out and all of Long Island became part of the province of New York. During colonial times, the economy of Long Island was focused on farming, fishing, and whaling. They sold their products to the growing city of New York, as well as England, the other American colonies, and the colonies in the Caribbean. Slavery on Long Island started in 1654 on Sylvester Manor in Shelter Island. Slavery would continue to grow on the island throughout the colonial period. Around the same time, the Native American population on the island declined rapidly, mostly due to infectious diseases carried by European colonists. Their communities were also being disrupted by land encroachment as more colonists entered the island and started farming on more of the available land. Many Long Island natives would move to Oneida, New York, and later Wisconsin to join the Brother Town Indians a new tribe which was an amalgamation of tribes from New England and Long Island. Throughout most of the Revolutionary War, Long Island was controlled by the British, but many colonists on the island were on the side of the Revolution. Long Island saw a lot of activity from the Culper Spy Ring, a pro-revolution network of spies that gathered info for George Washington and helped expose Benedict Arnold's plan to surrender West Point to the British forces. Revolutionary forces would conduct raids along the coast of Long Island, the most famous being Meg's Raid at Sag Harbor, where revolutionaries attacked a British Loyalist foraging party, killing six and capturing 90, destroying Loyalist boats and supplies. After the war, in 1790, the U.S. conducted its first census. The modern-day counties of Nassau and Suffolk had about 27,000 people, about 2,000 of which were slaves, 8.5%. 
although that percentage would soon go down. In 1799 and 1817, New York State passed bills for the gradual emancipation of slaves, with the last slaves being freed in the state by 1827. In the 19th century, Long Island was still mainly rural and agricultural. New railroad lines built during this time would connect the island closer to New York City and make it easier for Long Islanders to sell their goods in the city. The island also developed a prosperous shipbuilding industry along the North Shore in areas with deep ports such as Port Jefferson. Whaling continued to grow on the island until the mid-19th century, when petroleum-based oils started to replace whale-based ones for lighting and lubrication. At its peak, the whaling port of Sag Harbor had about 60 whale ships based there, employing 800 men. The U.S. had three major wars in the early and mid-19th century the War of 1812, the Mexican-American War, and the Civil War. Although no battles from any of these wars took place on Long Island, Long Islanders did fight in all of them. During the War of 1812, the British established a naval blockade of the eastern United States, including Long Island, and British ships captured and burned American ships on the Long Island Sound. Long Island was also a popular training ground for soldiers in the Civil War and Mexican-American War. By the late 19th century, the North Shore of Long Island had become a summer refuge for the richest residents of New York City, who built large, opulent estates in the area, copying basically every architectural style in Europe. The Vanderbilts, Roosevelt's, and J.P. Morgan all had houses in the area, which would be nicknamed the Gold Coast, and which would become the setting for the Great Gatsby. Many of these mansions are still up and open to visitors, such as Oheka Castle, which is the second largest private home in the U.S., Sagamore Hill, which was Theodore Roosevelt's former residence, and the old Vanderbilt Mansion, which is now a museum and planetarium. Around the same time, a huge influx of wealth was also entering the towns of East Hampton and South Hampton. Later, this area would just be known as the Hamptons. At the time, the area was mostly filled with farmers and fishermen, but it always had the reputation for being a home of the wealthy. For example, Gardner's Island was first purchased by Leon Gardner in 1639 and has been privately owned by the Gardner family even to this day. Towards the end of the 19th century, the Long Island Railroad extended through the area to Montauk. Luxury developers and rich people looking to build summer homes soon followed and continue coming to the Hamptons to this day. Residential real estate prices in the Hamptons rank among the highest in the U.S. In 2016, according to Business Insider, the zip code encompassing Sagaponic within South Hampton was listed as the most expensive in the U.S. with a median home sale price of $8.5 million. Around the turn of the century, new bridges and tunnels started being built that connected Manhattan with Long Island, such as the Brooklyn Bridge in 1883, the Williamsburg Bridge in 1903, and the Manhattan Bridge in 1909. People were now able to commute more easily across the East River to Manhattan, paired with the Long Island Railroad and later the Long Island Parkway system, which was being built in the 20s and 30s. It was now possible to commute from deeper into Long Island to Manhattan for work. As a result, new suburbs started to pop up and expand around the railroad and parkway systems. These changes also made it easier for average New York City residents to travel to Long Island for some fun and relaxation. New state parks opened up on Long Island, such as Fire Island State Park, Montauk Point State Park, and Jones Beach State Park, which would become the most heavily visited beach on the East Coast. Because of its flat geography and relative proximity to Europe, Long Island became a major center in aviation specifically a cluster of airfields in this area called the Hempstead Plains. These included Mitchell Airfield, later Air Force Base, which was where the first non-stop transcontinental airplane flight left in 1923, and Roosevelt Field, which was a starting point for Charles Lindbergh's first solo transatlantic flight in 1927. Long Island's aviation importance would later turn into an important region for the American military in both world wars. Military aviators were trained at Mitchell Air Force Base and the Grumman Corporation, based on Long Island, would build American planes for World War II, and later the Apollo Lunar Module. After the war, the suburbanization process that started in the beginning of the century went into overdrive. The Federal Housing Administration was created in 1934, which regulated the types of mortgages banks could offer home buyers. These changes made it easier for many Americans to afford a down payment on a house. It was around that same time the building firm Levitt & Sons came up with a plan to build cheap and mass-producible housing on former farmland on Long Island. Levittown would become a model for mass-produced suburbs that were popping up all over Long Island and the rest of America in the post-war years. Levittown also became a symbol of racist zoning practices that characterized many suburbs during the post-war years. 
Leases for homes in Levittown included a restrictive covenant, stating that houses could not be used or occupied by any person other than members of the Caucasian race. These covenants were copied in other suburbs and were encouraged by the FHA, who told their appraisers, if a neighborhood is to retain stability, it is necessary that properties shall continue to be occupied by the same social and racial classes. This created a de facto form of housing segregation in Levittown and similar Long Island suburbs, whose effects can still be seen today. The economy of post-World War II Long Island was characterized by people working and commuting to the city, but jobs and industry also developed on the island itself. Brookhaven National Lab, which specializes in nuclear and high-energy physics, opened up in 1947, and since its opening, seven Nobel Prizes have been awarded for work conducted at the laboratory. Mitchell Air Force Base was decommissioned in 1961 and later torn down, but it was replaced by a complex that includes Hofstra University and the Nassau Coliseum. The Sperry Gyroscopes Company, which built a variety of maritime, military, aerospace, and navigational products, opened an office in Lake Success in the 1940s, and a software company called Computer Associated opened on Long Island in the 70s. In the 21st century, Canon would open its U.S. headquarters in Melville, Grumman would continue to expand until it employed 23,000 people at its peak on Long Island in 1986. However, the company was bought up and merged with another airplane manufacturer. The resulting company would close almost all its facilities on Long Island. Long Island also developed a new wine industry in the North Fork starting in 1973. Today, there are about 38 wineries on the North Fork, becoming a major industry and a major source of tourism for the area. Since a large portion of the island's residents commuted to Manhattan for work, Long Island was devastated by the terrorist attacks on September 11th. Nearly 500 people from Long Island died. Almost all of the island's fire departments were called to assist the New York City Fire Department, and due to extremely clear weather, many Long Islanders could see the huge clouds of smoke rising for days from the ashes of the World Trade Center. Over the past few decades, Long Island has seen a decrease in manufacturing similar to other areas of the country. At the same time, Long Island's population is growing older. It has a significant number of retiring baby boomers, while young residents are leaving to find better opportunities and more affordable housing elsewhere. Another worrying trend is the amount of property taxes Long Islanders pay, which is something I've seen mentioned in the YouTube comments of almost every Long Island related video I've used in my research. Long Islanders pay some of the highest and least sustainable property taxes in the country. In the last decade, local government expenditures dropped by 57%, and tax levies by 64%, even though the population only grew by 3%. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and please subscribe if you want more American regions. The more positive feedback I get for these videos, the quicker I'll make new ones. Have a great day.